All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the fourth biblical commanded month, and it may have started yesterday here in the Pacific Northwest, but I was unable to sight the moon, um, the new moon. I think either it was too sunny outside, it could have been overcast, but I didn't see any clouds, I don't think, or it could have went over the hill too early, but tonight, um, this moon may stay up for a while. And uh, so there's a series of uh, rules in the Bible about what you're supposed to do on new moons, and Paul says not to let anybody bother us, judge us for keeping the Sabbaths, the new moons, and eating biblically clean and drinking biblically clean, um, because all these things are important because they point to the image of the Messiah, the body of the Messiah, and so they they are they're the the substance that he's made of. So the thing is, is that um, one of the rules. And this is not a mandatory rule. This is what King Dawid did. Is he uh, celebrated, had dinner with his family. Thank goodness it's not mandatory. But I'm wanting to do that. I'm going to see if I can get my family to meet um, on the new moons. And you're supposed to give an offering. It's very important. i got to remember to do that. you got to give an offering. You're not supposed to buy, sell, or trade on a new moon. And I'm not sure if I remember all the rules off the top of my head. There aren't very many, actually, that I found in the Bible. And if you want to look at those rules, there'll be a couple opportunities. You can go to the Autism Deliverance video. Um, it goes through the biblical um, holy days and the uh, the whole biblical calendar, the Aviv, the Abib, Barley, depending on if you say Aviv or Abib. And it, it uh, references, you know, sources from all different denominations and backgrounds to show that I'm not just making this stuff up. And uh, it's not just my opinion. So, anyway, so there's that. And then also, an upcoming video I'm going to be working on. It's uh, one that Carla and I worked on. She did a lot of work on a presentation. And I wasn't, just, I'm not happy with how it turned out. She wasn't happy with how it turned out. So I'm going to be redoing that one. It's going to also show the rules for uh, keeping the biblical calendar. And I'm not sure, I mean, we may not talk about specific days, what you have to do on specific certain days in that video. I might do a separate video on that, although I probably already have. But um, anyways, just letting people know. So yes, the biblical calendar probably started yesterday in some places, but I wasn't able to spot it. And based upon all of the research and historical writings, it appears that you are supposed to sight it to see it. Um, it's not a no moon. It's not an invisible moon. It's a new moon, and it's sighted. And uh, so there it is in the Pacific Northwest in the western sky. And it's a beautiful moon tonight. It is wonderful. The sunset's beautiful, too. And uh, so, anyways, have a wonderful fourth month. And I think that's one of the biblically safest ways is just the number of the month, just like the numbers of the days of the week. Um, because as you'll see in the references that I show, um, the, the modern Hebrew names for the months don't necessarily come from the Bible. And some of them are actually biblically forbidden uh, names that are not in Scripture. So the safest way to do it, you can. the first month is in Scripture, it's a viv, a bib. And there's some other, a few other names in there, but just the first month, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. And of course, the first name of the first month is important because it tells us about the barley being ripe. So, anyways, thanks so much and shalom.